Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program with Dr. Bob Teal. Dr. Teal, should Christians go off and live as a monk? No. Well, why not? And what exactly is a monk, anyway? According to Wikipedia, a monk comes from a Greek word which means single or solitary. It's a man who's a member of a religious order who lives in a monastery. It says a monk usually lives his life in prayer and contemplation. It's an ancient concept seen in many religions and in philosophy. And while the word can be applied to both men and women in English, monk usually used for men, where nuns are typically used for female monasteries. But basically, monks live alone. They generally just take care of themselves, and their focus is on themselves. In pagan religions, monks are often called holy men. What triggered this was something I got from the uh, Temple Institute yesterday in their newsletter. It started off by saying, be holy, for God is holy. They said, this is a tall order. It says, one of the words means to be distinct or unique. And so God, by definition, is, is holy, because, and he is unique. And he is one. So how are we supposed to express our uniqueness to become attain holiness? Are we supposed to separate ourselves from others, become recluses, live as monks, far from the maddening crowd? Astonishingly, the Bible prescribes the opposite. We have Saying our uniqueness, not by removing ourselves from society or distancing ourselves from others, but by reaching out and touching others. And that's what the Bible teaches us. Now, as far as the Bible, I want to go to Genesis chapter 1 and read verse 31. <clears throat> God saw everything he made <clears throat> very good. So it was evening and morning, the sixth day. Yet, what's the one and only thing God mentioned related to that creation that wasn't good? I, I don't think God mentioned anything that was not good, did he? Yes, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, to the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will make a helper comparable to him. A monasticism is a, a way, move away from what's good uh, and toward what's not good. God does not want people to be hermits. Well, can you give us some scriptures pointing to that from the New Testament? Yes. In what's called the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 14, Jesus said, You're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives off light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. People can't see your good works if you're living as a hermit. You know, Jesus said, Matthew 19, 19, we're to love our neighbors of self. How can you do that if you're living as a monk just for yourself? Also, in Romans chapter 15, starting in verse 1, the Apostle Paul taught that we who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let us each please his neighbor for his good, leading to his edification. Well, in order to help others, we must support them. And not just try to please ourselves. Monks don't strive to please others for their good leading edification. Monks mainly attempt to please themselves, although sometimes they produce things like beer or wine to support themselves. You know, although some thought the Apostle Paul endorsed monasticism, he argued against it, for example, in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9 and 10, where he said, I wrote you my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly didn't mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with covetous or sources of idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. But didn't Paul himself take a Nazarite vow which resulted in shaving the hair on his head? Yes, but that was temporary. And those vows are only temporal. They're not supposed to be permanent, okay. some permanent lifestyle. Remember, Paul said... Christians are not supposed to go out of the world, which is what the monks do. Let me also add that many Christians will not be physical monks, but become spiritual monks. They don't believe they ought to be subject to hierarchical church governance. And they don't believe they need to support any church organization. They think they're better off on their own. And that's basically what the monks teach. Does Jesus give us, any, uh, us in time Christians any warnings to that effect? Yes. Jesus warned that most end-time Christians would be Laodicean. The, the Greek word Laodicea is made up of two, which means the people decide. They decide what's important. 
And in Revelation chapter 13, starting in verse 14, Jesus said to the angel of the church and the Laodiceans, plural, so there's different ones, right? These things says the faithful and true witness, I know your works, but you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot, but well, then you are lukewarm. You're not cold or hot. I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say, I'm rich, wealthy. I need nothing. I don't need to be part of some church. You don't know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy gold refined to fire, which in this case should be to support the true work, so that you may be rich. As many as I love, Jesus said, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. He's talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. And he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So what better option does the Bible offer Christians rather than being a Laodicean? One of the things the Spirit said to the churches was talking to the Philadelphians. A Philadelphia is made up of two words that mean love of the brethren. Philadelphian Christians uh, support the end-time work to fulfill the commissions Jesus gave in Matthew 24, 14, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, about reaching and teaching the world. They don't live just for themselves, but to love and serve others. Laodiceans often get weary about doing good. They don't seem to understand what Apostle Paul wanted people to do. For example, in Galatians chapter 6, starting verse 9, he warned, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we'll reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are the household of the faith. Like monks, independent Laodiceans are not truly doing good to all who are part of the household of faith. We're also warned by the Apostle John, 1 John 4, starting verse 20, because if someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he's a liar. He who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who hasn't seen? And this is the command we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Well, living as a hermetic monk lifestyle doesn't fit with that. It's a selfish thing to do. It generally doesn't show love toward neighbor. Oh, yes, I know sometimes they have some good work projects. Now, as far as monasticism itself goes, this was not a practice of the early uh, church. The Catholic Encyclopedia talks about it starting to develop in the, the late uh, third, early fourth century, and said it really came to the West around 340, which is uh, in the fourth century. So monasticism, as we see it now, was certainly not part of the original faith. Uh, there's a place in Cappadocia, Turkey, by the way, they've got these uh, pillars of stone that they have little caves in them. And the monks will live individually there, and sometimes meet together, but basically just live for their own self. They're not they were so far from civilization. They weren't helping anybody or assisting others. And many also, by the way, uh, get what's called a tonsure. They get their head cut or their hair cut a certain way. Uh, Wikipedia says tra tonsure is traditional, a tr the traditional practice of Christian churches cutting and shaving their hair from the scalp of various uh, monks, etc. But they, uh, they claim that the origin's not clear, but uh, then back in the 7th, 8th century, they had three different forms of it. Is there any biblical support for the practice of tonsure? No, actually the opposite. In Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5, it says to the priest, they shall not make any bald place on their heads, which is basically what, it, what the tonsure is. And so this is something that, that's not supposed to be done. The... Uh, Pagan priests of the, of the Egyptian god Isis uh, did this, and this has been claimed to be an exact imitation of that. Also, it was an old practice of the priests of Mithra, which is the time of Emperor Constantine in the fourth century, which is probably why it uh, picked up in the Greco Roman Catholics after that. Anyway, the tantra is in conflict with uh, Leviticus 21. And although some people might say, well, those things were done away, neither Jesus nor his apostles taught Christians should do that or look like pagan priests. And those who do so give groups like the Muslims reasons to question and dismiss the whole idea of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Well, if Christians aren't supposed to be recluses or cut images of the sun into their hair, how are Christians supposed to live? Well, it says in Micah 9, 8, what is good, what does God require of us? To do justly, love mercy, love humbly with the Lord our God. 
And in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the conclusion of the matter is to fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. But I want to talk about a parable Jesus gave in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. He gave different people different amounts. And mm -hmm. one went in trading, which means he was interacting with others. He doubled what he got. He got a great reward. But one was like a monk. He had it. He held it. In verse 24, it says, I knew you were a hard man, and I was afraid. I took your talent, and I hid it in the ground. Here, you can have it back. <laughs> Jesus answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You ought to have done, done something else with it, so take it and give it to someone else. Well, the monk or the independent Christian is like the man who hid his talent. Jesus calls him wicked and lazy. The servant never took enough time to prove all things and serve where God would have wanted him to serve. Jesus expects us to work with others and to bear fruit. Don't deceive yourself that you're better off alone, which a lot of people have. But Jesus said, if we love him, we're supposed to keep his commandments. We talked about the Ten Commandments. But as mentioned before, Jesus also warned that Christians needed to not be lukewarm about supporting the work of the church. What work of the church? Well, if you're a Christian, someone did something to help you get reached. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't that lukewarm about it, I hope. And, you know, Jesus said, if you want men to do to you, do to others. We're not supposed to be physical or spiritual hermits. I want to also go further as to some of what your purpose is. We have a booklet called The Mystery of God's Plan, Why Did God Create? anything, why did God make you? And, and we quote, for example, the book of Romans, that all members don't have the same function. Individually, God has set members, one, each one in the body, as he's pleased. So we're different. We're unique. And who are we? We are ones who can give love in a unique way. And that's something we should be able to do eternally. And that was even known in the uh, 1800s or the last century, by the Church of God's Seventh Day. A true Christian builds characters now, that, so through the tests, opportunities, and trials of this life, we will help to have a better tomorrow. Ultimately, God has special plans for you personally. God made you to give love in an individual way, and you will do it better if you're not living as a hermit. Mm -hmm. Well, that description of the purpose and meaning of our own personal individual creation is exciting. What should we do personally? We need to be living by faith and obedience to God. Um, we also would take into account Galatians 6, verses 7 to 8, not to be deceived. God's not mocked. Wherever you sow, one will reap. Monks sow to the flesh. We're supposed to sow to the spirit. Mm -hmm. God has a plan for all of us, and it has to do with what we do and our work. We're not called to live as monks at this time. We're never told to live like the pagan monks did. While most of the world, including Wikipedia, by the way, believes that original Christianity is a compromise of paganism and doesn't uh, represent the practice of Jesus. Obviously, things like a tonsure would be a sign that people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. But the idea of a permanent monastic lifestyle is neither scriptural nor consistent with the teachings for the practices of first or second century Christians. The Bible shows that Christians are to love their neighbors, which means we tend to have neighbors that we can love and assist. Mm -hmm. That includes, by the way, ones who don't profess Christ. A monastic lifestyle is in conflict with that. Sadly, many who claim Christianity don't hold to its original teachings. And sadly, many end time Christians also don't hold the right teachings when it comes to loving one another and supporting the work of reaching others. Don't be like them. God has a plan for you. Don't sell yourself short by living as a physical or a spiritual monk. Thank you, Dr. Teal. For more interviews with Dr. Teal, in addition to written as well as audio articles, visit our website at biblenewsprophecy.net. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program. <laughs>